Good evening everyone. Time for another member update. This is the daily chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can see the current price we're at 1950. Now I've drawn a couple of lines in here because there's something that I want to point out here about these prices. We know that silver is one of the most volatile markets out there. We know that the reason is not because of any fundamentals that have to do with silver, but rather it has to do with the bankers who are manipulating the price of silver because they are threatened by silver's potential to bring down their fake money fiat system. Now the reason I've drawn these lines in here is I want you to see how long the price of silver has been relatively stable. So we're talking about a period of time from roughly mid-April to the present about eight months or so where silver has pretty much stayed between $24 and $20. That's going to be a 20% fluctuation, but that's fairly stable for silver. Now, you'll see as I bring up the main topic, it's going to be the Perth plot. Uh, now, let me make it clear. I love Perth Mint products, especially the Lunar Series, which is my absolute favorite but I am completely disgusted with the Perth Mint and I think that the Perth Mint is a dishonest borderline criminal operation and I'm gonna to try to prove that to you so these are coins that I watch very closely because I like to collect them so we're gonna go through the three main ones that you can buy in the United States for a reasonable price it's gonna be Atmex Gainesville and Provenant Metals. Now this is the Lunar Series. This is my favorite series of the Perth Mint. I've listed all of these low to high. We're going to look at the availability here. You can see the first one is going to be this half ounce 2014 Year of the Horse. So that's next year's issue but it's been out for a while and you can see that it's $3.99 per coin over spot. That's $8 an ounce over spot for that coin. The next coin, cheapest coin you can get is the 2013 half ounce and that's going to be $37 or $17 an ounce over spot. The half ounce dragon is even higher and then we get the colorized snake coin. We haven't hit the one ounce yet. We're at the half ounce rabbit. And here we are at the one ounce year of the horse coin at $35.61. That's $15 above spot. And then that's about all we really have on Atmex. Here's the two ounce coin and that's going to be about $26 an ounce so that's going to be $6 an ounce or so over spot. Let's go to Provident Metals. You can see they're out of stock of the Snake Coin half ounce from 2013. The half ounce Year of the Horse here is roughly that $7 above spot then we get higher with the half ounce dragon we get the year of the rabbit and we have the forty dollars so twenty dollars above spot for the year of the horse one ounce and you can see it's coming soon it's not available here's the one ounce year of the dragon for fifty four dollars that's going to be $35 over spot. And this is Gainesville Coins. The lowest one we have here is the Colorized Snake, 1836. We've got the horse there, $15 above spot. And then we get the Year of the Tiger at $87. So 
a tremendous shortage of decently priced lunar series silver. Now keep in mind when I read what I'm going to talk about here that the price of silver has been steady between the price range of 20 and $24 an ounce for the last going on eight months. Now let's look at a article that appeared in the Perth Mint Bullion website. If you've ever gone to Perth Mint to their website and tried to find any of these coins, you can't find them at all. And uh, that's another very suspicious thing about the Perth Mint. Keep in mind that this isn't like any other business. If you think about any other business where you're selling things at a profit and you have an extraordinary markup and yet you have a shortage, then you don't have an honest business. So let's look at this article about shortages potentially with Perth products and this is from the summer of 2012. Expect shortages of precious metal coins worldwide should investment demand jump dramatically as a result of another financial crisis. According to Perth Mint's Braun Suchecki, probably not less than 2% of people started buying precious metals. Sorry about that. During the financial crisis in 2008, the result was rationing of coins by mints. Okay, now any time you have rationing, any time you have rationing, you need to look to see if there really is a free market. Because shortages, here's your two key words, shortages and rationing means that you don't have a free market. It means that something is interfering with the market. Now, the only thing that's powerful enough to interfere with the market is government. So we know that governments are interfering with the markets. In a telephone interview with the Financial Survival Network, Braun questioned what would happen should serious mass market demand like that seen at the end of the 1970s reemerge. Despite better preparedness among mints generally for this possibility, Braun told Kerry Lutz there remains a huge potential production bottleneck problem that investors would do well to be aware of. While coining is fairly straightforward process, he said, the manufacturing of precious metal blanks was a much more complex, time-consuming process. So, we're to believe that creating the stamps and stamping out the coins for the final product is a straightforward process but making blanks is time consuming. As a result, a lot of mints don't have the scale or expertise to become involved in this aspect of minting. We're therefore reliant on a handful of operations for supplies. Kerry Lutz revealed that the U.S. Mint, for example, relies on just three suppliers, including the Perth Mint. Braun's message to investors, if you foresee another major crisis, buy now and avoid the certainty of increasing premiums as coins become scarce. Now, <laughs> I trust anybody from the Perth Mint about as far as I can throw them. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that something dishonest is going on. Now, let's look at an article back from September 6, 2008. And the reason why I'm reading this is to demonstrate to you that the Perth Mint has had over five years years to address this issue yet they have not addressed the issue and the reason why I contend they haven't addressed the issue is the Perth Mint is in on a scam that this is a plot it's a scam it's a ripoff they know how valuable silver is and they have no intention of selling silver at the price that spot is quoted at or near that or a reasonable markup from that because they're not interested in what they purport to do which is 
produce silver for people to consume. What they're interested in is rationing silver. So let's read what Jason Hummel has to say. And remember, this is back from 2008. If the Perth Mint has $880 million worth of silver and gold in inventory from their certificate program to use as working inventory to make coins, then why aren't they producing many Australian coins that should be flooding the marketplace and available everywhere at close to spot prices? Let me explain why I hammer Perth so mercilessly. The Perth Mint has issued silver certificates. Investors trust them. Perth has issued those silver certificates for a reason, a reason that silver investors should love. As they are a mint, they need an operating pool of physical metal to use as an inventory for operations to be able to make silver coins to sell to the public in the form of one ounce rounds. This is a fantastic reason and I would support that 100%, especially if they buy more silver as needed, buying one ounce for every ounce sold. In theory, that would mean that there could be there could never be a silver shortage at the Perth Mint. There is especially no reason for a silver shortage to exist at Perth, given that Australia exports over 400 tons of silver each year. The Perth Mint could never run out of silver to sell if that program was run honestly. In stark contrast to the U.S. Mint, which is suffering a shortage of blanks. In fact. The current worldwide shortage of investment silver such as one ounce coins means that the world desperately needs a functional mint with plenty of silver for operations. But Perth does not produce one ounce rounds for the public in bulk form at just above spot prices as other mints do. Why not? Why can't they? For example, the Canadian mint produces silver maple, maples 3 to 5 million per year, and the U.S. mint produces silver eagles at about 10 to 20 million per year, and Austria is now producing silver philharmonics, and France, I hear, may also start producing silver again. And all these are available between 2 and $3 an ounce over the spot price, sometimes now over $4 an ounce due to the shortage of silver. In stark contrast, Perth produces much less and they sell their one ounce coins at an average price of $61 per ounce. That's $48 over the spot price for Perth one ounce rounds. Isn't that a 369% premium over the spot price? What's the problem here? Shouldn't they be able to produce silver coins like the U.S., Canada, and Austria? Perhaps Perth doesn't have enough silver in their working inventory to produce more. But they've issued $880 million worth of gold and silver certificates to the public and therefore should have plenty of working inventory. In fact, it is so much working inventory that it amounts to an entire year's worth of investment demand for silver. Net investment demand for silver is estimated at 60 million ounces by the CPM group, which at $13 an ounce is only $780 million. Perth is, has so much working in inventory that even if Perth Mint had to wait for a year hold time for delivery to replace their inventory, they would still be able to supply nearly 100% of the silver that the investment world needs, and they could supply it with no delays to the public whatsoever. It is so much working inventory that if Perth Mint had to wait one month for supplies of all new silver, they could provide 12 times the world's annual silver demand, and all silver investors everywhere would be buying nothing but Perth Mint Australian one-ounce coins and no other forms of silver whatsoever. If only one-tenth of the 880 million ounces of gold and silver certificates is in silver I'm sorry, $880 million, then that's $88 million. Divide $13, that's 6.8 million ounces of silver. If that much were minted monthly, that would come out to 81 million one ounce rounds, which would be four times as many coins minted by the U.S. Mint. Therefore, one would think that if the Perth Mint was honorable, the Perth Mint would be producing far more silver ounces than the U.S. Mint each year at a lower cost and that we would see those in abundance in the marketplace. But Perth does not issue coins like that. You cannot buy Australian bullion coins in bulk. Why is that? I think the answer is obvious. Where is the abundance of Perth Mint rounds? There is no abundance. They are scarce. 
it appears to me that Perth Silver is in their in their certificate program quote used for operations was used to cover unprofitable operations for years and that in actual fact they have no working inventory or they have less than 1% of the 880 million dollars worth of inventory barely enough to meet some redemptions and orders on occasion over 50 people have continually complained to me of shortages of silver from the Perth Mint in my prior emails exposing them. Why are these people complaining to me? Do I have the word Perth Mint customer service rep tattooed on my forehead or in my disclaimer? No. Sell or redeem your Perth Mint certificates quickly. Now, folks, this was back in September 6th of 2008. And even to this day, with the price of silver hovering between $20 and $24 for the last eight months, Perth Mint is unable to mint enough coins to satisfy demand. There are shortages, there are backlogs, you can't find the coins. Why is that? The only possible explanation there can be when you're talking about shortages and rationing is that there is an interference in the free market. That interference in free markets can only be done by cartels or governments. So we're talking about a manipulation of silver. The Perth Mint is a, a quasi-government organization that uh, is with, the, I believe it's the state of, uh, I don't remember which uh, province it is in Australia but it's a, a government organization and they simply refuse to sell silver at a profit now we've had these various pundits and clowns and and people who come out and tell us what the cash cost of silver is if the cash cost of silver is as low as they say it is why isn't Perth selling a ton of these coins and making an enormous profit and I think we know the answer because there's a plot. Perth is in on a plot and the plot is to suppress the price of silver and to prevent people from buying silver and to create artificial shortages and to create artificial bottlenecks and to have all kinds of rationing because the powers that be and the Perth Mint is one of them want to prevent people from stacking physical silver because there's such a shortage of physical silver that if money ever started flowing into it it would be a flood and the price of silver would explode and of course the other reason is that they probably consider that silver to be a national resource and they know that the price that silver is at right now that if they let it go out of the country that they're being bled dry of vital natural resource so Perth Mint is in on the plot they've been in on the plot for years and that is why it's so very difficult to find any reasonably priced Perth Mint coins and we'll talk to you next time